Hello, my name is Jin Wei Tang. Welcome to the presentation of our work, Honey, I Shrunk the Domain, Frequency Aware Force Field Reduction for Efficient Fluid Summarization. In this work, we focus on keyframe-based fluid control. The Euro fluid control pipeline can look like this. Given a set of sparsely defined target objectives, a set of axonal force field is generated by the control algorithm. The force fields are then incorporated into a fluid simulation at each time step to create a fluid simulation that matches the input targets. Our work falls into this fluid control framework. Our method can correctly match keyframes as, as is shown in these two examples. Before explaining how our method works, let's see how previous approaches tackled keyframe matching. One popular approach of computing controlling forces is to evaluate heuristics that will drive the simulation to the target frame. The work of Fatal and Linchitsky computes forces based on the difference between the target and current densities. Shi and Yu defines targets by representing ob object surfaces as implicit functions and impulse velocity constraints on smoke boundary to match the smoke surface. Ture et al. generates control particles which will guide the particle-based liquid simulations. Huang et al. defines the control forces in a low-resolution simulation grid. While these methods are efficient and require little or no optimization iterations, they do not guarantee that the target shapes will, match, will be matched because the force field compute computation does not take the whole sequence into account. So these methods neglect the optimality of the solution. Another popular approach for keyframe matching is to formulate the problem as an unconstrained optimization. The objective function is minimized for the entire simulation range producing results that closely match keyframe targets. Toye et al. was the first work exploring unconstrained optimization for fluid control. They computed analytic derivatives relative to a fluid simulator. However, since the derivatives are computed in a forward pass, so each derivative computation of the input force require a full solver evaluation restricting the approach to handle only very few control parameters. McNamara et al. followed up the work of Toye et al. and noticed that forward pass derivatives could be computed in a dual way by the adjoint method, requiring only one solver evaluation for computing all necessary derivatives. The adjoint method largely improved the efficiency of computing the gradients and enable the algorithm to handle much more control parameters. Penn and Monoka formulated the keyframe-based control problem in the same way as uh, McNamara et al., but proposed to solve the optimization by decomposing the optimization process into two parts, advection optimization and Navier-Stokes optimization. Another set of work falls into the range of constraint optimization based control. The pressure projections that can be formulated as a linear constraint of the optimization process to enforce incompressibility while optimizing specific objectives. Nielsen et al. used this idea to guide high resolution flows to match simulations from coarser resolutions. Gregson et al adopted a similar strategy to recover fluid velocities matching low-resolution velocity fields obtained by tomographic scanning. Inglis et al. further improved the constraint optimization efficiency through the primal dual method, applying the method in smoke guiding as well as separating solid wall boundary conditions. We base our work on the adjoint method proposed by McNamara et al and focus on smoke simulations. Let's look into more details of the pipeline for the optimization. The fluid solver advances the simulation at each time step under the influence of external forces. And the objective function is defined 
as the difference between the smoke computed by the solver and the target keyframes. For each iteration, the system computes the gradients of the objective function with respect to the control force field for the whole simulation range. Updating the control force fields with gradients computed by the adjoint method. The whole process is applied iteratively until convergence. Now let's take a closer look at the objective function. The objective function is usually composed of two parts. The first part computes the difference between simulation and target densities, where k is the set of uh, keyframes. A density preprocessing function, such as Gaussian blur, on the density field can be employed for improved convergence. The second part focuses on regularization of the computed force fields. The ticking off regularization penalize the magnitude of the force fields, while the total variation regularization encourages smoothness of the force fields. Here, alpha and beta are weights for regularization terms. One of the challenges of optimizing for this objective is the number of parameters that need to be tuned. For example, the density preprocessing function, as well as the regularization weights, need to be specified, and they have a significant impact on the quality of the optimization. Previous work in introduced even more parameters. Toei et al. and McNamara et al. need standard deviations from Gaussian functions used to decompose force fields. And Penn and Manoka require a set of parameters that balance between multiple distinct objectives. Tuning parameters is a burdensome task because optimizing control forces for a single scene is a slow process that may take up to many hours depending on the simulated scene. Additionally, a set of hyperparameters that are tuned for lower resolutions will often not map to higher resolutions. This sequence shows that increasing the regularization weight beta helps with the optimization in 120A square to converge to keyframe targets. But the same beta fails to make optimization converge in 256 square. Another challenge lies in the inherently highly nonlinear and non-convex nature of the keyframe matching problem. This couples with the high dimensionality of the parameter space and makes the optimization converge to local minima easily. Local minimums are characterized by solutions that have zero gradients relative to the optimization, but are clearly far away from the optimal solution. Lastly, we also found that standard methods allow the optimized force to have divergent modes during the optimization process. In classical simulation, we usually choose low tolerance pressure solvers because it increases the speed of the simulation. But this no longer works in optimization setting because the optimization tend to take advantages of it, resulting in unphysical smoke sources in the simulation. One solution, of course, is to use a tolerance close to machine precision, but this really costs too much computation. Our proposed methods aim to solve these uh, previously mentioned challenges through a dimensionality reduction of the force field parameters. Similarly to the movie, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, we use a carefully designed domain shrinker, which removes the need of parameter tuning, achieves better keyframe matching, removes divergent modes of the force fields, and provides faster and better convergence. Our first contribution is to reduce the space of possible forces to the family of strictly divergence-free velocity fields, we take the curl of the vector potential to generate a force field that is strictly incompressible. Instead of optimizing for a force field, we optimize the objective function with respect to vector potentials. And this is possible because the curl operator is fully differentiable. This is our first dimensionality reduction to the, on the domain the Helmholtz decomposition shows the space of incompressible vector fields is smaller 
than the space of all possible vector fields. The second dimensionality reduction aims to improve convergence while providing automatic regularization that removes the need of hyperparameter tuning. To do so, we optimize the frequency components on the Fourier domain of the force field. A progressively growing mask in the Fourier domain is applied as the optimization advances. This effectively implements a policy of converging firstly the low frequencies of the vector potential. This means bigger structures will be optimized first and smaller structures will follow up. Since the inverse Fourier transform is differentiable, we can compute the gradients with respect to this set of parameters. We design our filter mask as ideal low-pass filters. To determine the frequency cutoffs of each phase of the optimization, we heuristically enforce the optimization to always resolve the same amount of turbulence energy at each phase. A multiplier of 2 to the power of 3 over 2 is obtained. We can apply the splitting recursively to obtain a series of cutoff frequencies for ideal low pass filters. During the optimization process, when the objective enters a plateau and its relative change is lower than the threshold, the optimization automatically switches to the next band. This typically results in sudden decrease in the convergence plot which helps a lot with the convergence of our method. Let's now look at some results of our methods and comparisons with the previous methods. In order to quickly validate our ideas, we first devised 2D benchmark tests. Three different types of force fields that do not vary in time are applied to a rising plume simulation. Several keyframes are selected from the resulting simulations and used as targets for the optimization. In the benchmark tests, we show again that employing smoothness regularization improves the results of McNamara et al., but the same ways for the regularization terms do not really map to higher resolutions. Our approach is able to automatically find a smooth transition between frames without the need for parameter tuning. We also compared the results with the work of Penn and Monoka by directly taking the animation from their paper and devising similar keyframe targets to run our optimization schemes. The results show that in our optimization, bigger structures are optimized first and therefore it focuses on smooth motions of the smoke and develops small details accompanying the overall movements. The following 3D results show some applications of our methods. Predefined shapes can be used as target keyframes. In this example, the target is a rubber toy mesh composed with part of the smoke. Our method can also be used to generate a new simulation after editing existing simulations. Three frames from an existing simulation is extracted. The user warps and deforms the extracted frames to create three target keyframes. Our method takes the three key target keyframes for generating the new simulation. We can also couple our method with a simple differentiable renderer. We design an initial simulation, visualize it with a simplified renderer. This allows the user to paint on the resulting rendering. The user can paint strokes to add and smooth, remove densities and use image warping tools to deform densities locally. The differentiability of the simplified renderer allows us to compute the gradients of the objective function to the renderer, making it compatible with our gradient-based optimization method. Our method is easily extended to include solid obstacles because boundary conditions do not affect the gradients with respect to the force field. The force field values lying inside the solid obstacles also do not affect the simulation because the pressure projection step can handle the velocity field penetrating into solid obstacles. 
Our approach successfully matches the target keyframes without apparent discontinuity in between keyframes. Force fields, including owning lower frequency bands, require less computational time and can serve as a preview of the final results, which is especially useful for authoring simulations. Once higher frequency bands are added, results display localized details while also preserving the main trajectory of the smoke. We also performed an ablation study on our low frequency first strategy. Komogolov inspired fr frequency decomposition of the vector potentials is one way to implement low frequency first strategy. We implement another low frequency first strategy by progressively upsampling the vector potentials as optimization progresses. Both reduced uh, strategies can work better than standard methods. But ours converge faster and to a better local minima in some of the examples than the progressive upsampling strategy. Lastly, the performance of our method for three of the examples are shown to compare with the method of McNamara et al. With the help of both strategies to reduce the optimization parameter domain, we reach a speed up of up to 8.8 .8 times. In conclusion, we have presented a simple yet powerful technique to address the lack of constraints and high dimensionality of the parameter space through param parameterizing the force field as vector potentials to enforce incompressibility, as well as adapting a low frequency first optimization strategy. Our method advances previous work on fluid control by providing better error convergence and density preservation, smoother transitions between simulations and keyframes. Our parameterization also removes the need of hyperparameter tuning and achieves a faster convergence performance. There are two major limitations of our method though which are also general limitations of keyframe-based control methods. The first one is the huge memory consumption when using the adjoint method. For example, in our 128 cubic example with 30 frames, roughly 24 gigabytes of memory is needed for the optimization process. One can alleviate the memory bottleneck by exploring sparse implementation of the parameter space and implementing sparse gradient computation whenever possible. Another possible workaround is to perform separate optimization process for each of the keyframes and connect the optimizations with certain smoothing operations. The second limitation is on the density frames. Due to the highly turbulent nature of the smoke simulations, creating density keyframes are typically not easy to do. One possible future direction to address this issue is to apply our method to other control handles, such as control particles, low resolution guidance, as well as flow features. These are all explored by the previous work in optimization-free approaches. I think it is interesting to combine our optimization methods with these handles. Thank you for your attention.